Hey guys, happy Monday. Hope everybody's doing well out there. Uh, recently, I made a video talking about different ways you can help secure your home server to uh, to give you an extra bit of peace of mind uh, as far as uh, online security is concerned when it comes to self hosting. So one of the things that comes up periodically when, when I get comments and questions and things, whether it's in the comment sections of my videos or in uh, Discord chats or, or wherever, is people often want to know uh, what the best practice is for uh, exposing Portainer to the internet. And my, my go-to response to that is don't. Uh, and the reason for that is simple. It's Portainer is basically like giving somebody that you don't know uh, a key to your house and expecting them to behave. So that might be kind of a weird analogy to make there, but but effectively, once you have Portainer attached to your to your Docker environment, uh, you can you can basically deploy whatever you want. So you want to make sure that it's not excessively easy to get in and uh, manipulate anything in Portainer. So what I want to show in this video is how you can use Google authentication. So using your actual going through the Google uh, login process to actually log into your Portainer instance, uh, whether you need to, for whatever reason, expose your, your home server's uh, Portainer to the internet, or if you've got a VPS out in the cloud that's got Portainer on it and you want to add a little bit more security. Uh, I know that you could also set this up, or you could set up Portainer behind a VPN and make it only accessible through that VPN, uh, and that's probably the, the preferred way to do it. But uh, if you don't want to go through that, uh, we can actually uh, go ahead and set up Google authentication uh, for your Portainer instance. So let's jump over to my desktop and take a look at how to do that. So here we are on uh, on my Portainer instance. And uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to settings and go to authentication. And if we come over here to OAuth, uh, that's that's where we're going to start. But uh, you'll notice that there are some different providers available in here for uh, authentic or third-party authentication through OAuth. Uh, what you will notice is that these are grayed out, and that's because these are typically reserved uh, for for uh, Portainer Business Edition or for enterprise level users. Uh, however, I did talk to the folks at Portainer, and Neil said that this would be a good idea to make a video to uh, show you guys how to use Google authentication uh, on your community edition setup. So some of this is fairly straightforward and some of it isn't. Uh, so we're going to kind of bounce back and forth and we'll do the easy stuff first and then we'll jump into the more complex stuff and then we'll kind of come back and wrap all this up. So uh, what we want to do is uh, scroll down just a little bit here. Uh, and what we want to do is we're going to have to eventually come up with a client ID and a client secret uh, for OAuth. We're going to create that uh, through Google Developers. So you will need a Google Developers account, but we'll come back to that. So what we're going to do is I've got some notes over here. So I've got all this stuff available uh, in a different window down here. I will make it available uh, in the description down below via either a link or, or just plain text down there. But just know uh, that, that you will need to go ahead and copy and paste uh, this bit of information and to get started. You will also need to make sure that you have uh, a domain name available. You'll want to make sure that you you kind of uh, think about what you want your your URL to be for that because we're going to need that uh, here in a minute. Uh, so you will want to make sure that you've got a domain name and a reverse proxy set up on your server uh, to really take full advantage of this. So uh, your resource URL here, let's go ahead and copy and paste uh, that in there. Now this redirect URL right here, it says, this is our this is our local address. This is what we use to log in uh, locally. What we're gonna do is change that. I'm gonna call this HTTPS. Um, I'm gonna call it port.dbtech.x, oops, dot X, Y, Z. Um, and then for these next two, these are gonna be email, like so. And then we're just gonna kind of pause here for a second. So what we wanna do next is come over here to the Google Cloud Platform and create a project. I will, again, have all links to all this in the description. So we're gonna create a project. Uh, I'm gonna call this uh, Portainer. Uh, and I'm not gonna get, I don't need an organization or anything, so I'll just click on Create. Okay, so here we can see uh, that I've got this available. So I'm gonna go ahead, uh, select, uh, uh, select Project there, just like I've done there. What we wanna do is come over to here, click on APIs and services. So what we'll do is we'll go to create credentials. Uh, we're going to, uh, well, the first thing I guess we need to do here is actually configure a consent screen for OAuth. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, this will be external. We're gonna click create. The app name, again, I'm gonna call this Portainer. And then I'm gonna put in a, an email address here. Okay, so we've got our name, we've got our email address here. We're gonna scroll down. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put in uh, an email address here as well. Oops. 
We'll click Save and Continue. Like so. Well, we'll just go ahead and scroll down. We'll click Save and Continue. Nothing under Scopes. We don't need any test users, so we'll click Save and Continue. This is our summary. All of this is fine, so we'll go back to Dashboard. So now we can go back over here to Credentials. Uh, we're going to create credentials. We're going to create an OAuth client ID. Application type will be web application. Again, I'm going to call this Portainer. Oops, sort of. There we go. JavaScript origins. So what we're going to do is HTTPS. Uh, and then we'll do uh, port.dbtech.xyz. We'll add that. And so let's go ahead and just delete that. There we go. And then we're actually just going to copy this for our redirect URL as well. And we'll click on create. And right here, um, <clears throat> uh, it's saying that OAuth is limited to 100 scope origins uh, until the OAuth consent screen is verified. And that's fine. Uh, we can go ahead and, and just kind of go with this at first. So I'm going to copy my client ID. And then I'm going to come back over to here. I'm going to paste that in. Then I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to copy client secret, and I'm going to paste that in. So then I'll go ahead and click on save settings here. So now all of this should be good to go. So now what we want to do is actually come over to here and we want to uh, go to users. Let's make sure we save this one more time. So we'll go to users. We're going to add a new user here. Uh, and this is actually going to be the email address of whatever user you want to be able to log into Portainer with. So whatever Gmail address you want to use here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say David at dbtech reviews.com. I'm going to make him an administrator like so, and I'm going to say click uh, just like that. So now we've got an admin and we've got DB Tech Reviews also as an admin. Here we can see authentication, internal and OAuth there. So what we want to do next <clears throat> is actually go ahead and log out. Okay, so now that we have this screen up and going, uh, the next thing we need to do is come over to here. Uh, we're going to do, uh, go to our DNS management. We're going to add a record. Uh, I'm just going to call this a CNAME record. You could do this with an A record as well. We call this port and I'll just do at, so it'll be port.dbtech.xyz, just like we've talked about. Say save, like that. Then we'll come back over to Nginx, Nginx Proxy Manager and add a new host. So once we're here, we'll go ahead and put in a port.dbtech.xyz, put in the IP address of our server, like so. We'll go, that's going to go to 9000 for Portainer. We're going to block there. Uh, we're going to request a new SSL. And then we'll go ahead and click on save. Okay, so now that we've got port.dbtech.xyz set up here, let's go ahead and click that. Hey, that's a good sign. So let's actually come back over to here. Uh, let's go ahead and click on DNS only and switch that uh, to proxy just for the extra, extra security there. And so now what we can do, let's go ahead and just refresh that. Let's log in with Google. I'm going to select that email address. And now I'm logged in. I can see all of my containers that are up and running. Uh, I can basically, I can do whatever I want in here now uh, without any issue. So let's see, let's start up Gluten here and see what happens. So now we're able to go in here and manipulate uh, our portainer remotely, securely over an SSL using Google Authentication via OAuth. Now there's one more thing that you may want to actually consider doing here, and that's if we come over here to Users, go to Admin, uncheck that so he's not an administrator, and click Save. The reason for that is because somebody still may try to access your system via that admin account. We don't want that. Uh, so if you make sure that he's not an admin, what we can do is actually log out. We can log in with an internal admin or uh, internal authentication, like so. And now, even if somebody does get in with your admin account, there's nothing here that they can do. So that's how you can quickly fairly quickly and fairly easily set up Google OAuth to uh, handle all of the authentication to your server. Just make sure that if you want to give somebody else access uh, to your server using their Gmail address, that you use that Gmail address as a new user, a uh, username basically, in order to set that up. So fairly straightforward process. Again, all of these steps will be available in the link or in a link in the description down below. Uh, so you don't have to try to follow all of that uh, the way I did it, I, at kind of the pace I did it. Also, so you'll want to copy and paste some stuff in there as well. So again, all of that will be available in the description down below. Uh, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. It would help me out a ton. Uh, if you know anybody that's looking to get into Portainer, it'd be really cool if you'd share my channel with them. I'm always trying to grow my audience and uh, expose new people to Docker and Portainer and self-hosting and home servers and that sort of thing. So if you'd share this video, that would be amazing as well. Of course, while you're down there uh, looking for links and all of that sort of stuff, there are a couple of different ways you 
can support the channel. Uh, also, via links in the description down below. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to my patrons. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for your recurring uh, patronage. Very much appreciated. Also, my channel members, there's only a couple of you right now, and I get that. Uh, but thank you guys for being there uh, and supporting me as well. Very much appreciated there also. But I think, with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.